Hello friends, welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Gopi. I am a cyber security architect and penetration tester. Today we are discussing about the security risk analysis or security risk assessment. Last video we saw about the threat model. Using Microsoft threat model we created data flow diagrams and we identified the threats and the report also we downloaded. Once we identify the threats, how we need to create the risk assessment. So that aspect we can discuss today. Let's go to our session now. Agenda, terminologies and definition which is related to the risk assessment, risk assessment overview, sample risk assessment report. Okay, terminologies and definition. CVSS, Common Vulnerability Scoring System, Pre-Risk Control, Current risk rating of the identified threats post risk control risk rating after providing the security controls or recommendations residual risk open threats and fix is not implemented currently the known risk we call it as residual risk okay risk assessment overview what is risk assessment in security risk assessment is a process in security to identify assess and implement required security controls for the product or application or system. Why risk assessment? It used to prevent the security defects, vulnerabilities, threats in the system or application or product. Benefits of the risk assessment. We can track the security risk of the product or application. Risk mitigation plan we can do. How to do? risk assessment we have open source standards as well as the proprietary standards also to execute the risk assessment example the nist 839 iso 3100 there have many standards also we can follow any one of the standard and we can execute the risk assessment okay security risk assessment overview the security risk we need to identify each phase of the product or application development life cycle. Example, if we take the first stage pre-sales, we already discussed about the pre-sales activity. Suppose if we have any security gaps in the pre-sales, example, requirements gap or timeline, tools, any components limitation, if we have any security risk, we need to update in the risk sheet or risk assessment sheet. Then the requirements stage. Suppose if we have any security requirements gap, if we don't have any security requirements to achieve end-to-end -end security, that also one of the risk we need to consider and we need to update in the risk assessment sheet. Once we come to the design architect phase, so there we doing the threat model, threat identification, cyber security bill of materials, component known vulnerabilities. If we have any risk here, we need to update in the risk sheet. Okay, in the development, suppose if we have any security gaps in the secure coding, SAST scan report, if we have any open vulnerabilities, SES scan report, if we have any open vulnerabilities, that will create the risk so we need to update this risk in the risk assessment sheet then are the DAST or penetration test vulnerabilities in the testing phase suppose if we have any known vulnerabilities that will create the risk so we need to update these details in the risk assessment then deployment hardening vulnerability scanning vulnerability management from this aspect, if we have any risk, we need to update in the risk sheet. Once we update in the risk sheet, how we need to execute the risk assessment or risk analysis? That aspect we can discuss now. Okay, risk assessment template. When we identify any threats or vulnerabilities or any security related risk, we need to create the risk assessment we saw in the earlier slide. Here you can see the threats or vulnerabilities description properly we need to update in the sheet. Then the second matrix we need to create the risk assessment. What is the risk assessment for the identified threat or vulnerabilities? 
you, we can use the CVSS calculator. Using this calculator, we can create the risk. I will show the demo also how to create the risk using the CVSS calculator. So once we identify the threads, that may be the critical, medium, low, high, info or none, right? Suppose if this is critical or medium or low or high, we need to provide the security controls to mitigate that risk. So recommendations and re recommendations or remediations also we need to provide. Then post risk control. Once we identify the controls and remediation, suppose if we implement that feature, what will be the risk rating? So that post risk details also we need to calculate using the risk assessment sheet. Suppose sometimes due to some of the external component limitation or some of the reason we, we may not fix that issue. So that issue will be open condition. That, that time we need to update in the residual risk category. Then impact analysis. Suppose if we have any open security vulnerabilities or based on the new controls and remediations, if we have any impact analysis for the application or product, we need to analyze and we need to update accordingly. Based on the security controls and remediations, whenever we need, we need to update the new security requirements in the application or product requirements. Okay, now we can see the sample demo, how we need to execute the risk assessment. Last time we executed the threat model using Microsoft threat model tool and we created the report. Suppose if you want the threat modeling tool demo, you can go to our previous session and you can watch the video. So this is the report we downloaded from the threat modeling tool and we have the threats also. You can see this is the data flow diagram for the sample web application and we identified some of the threads and each threads list are described here. Example, the first thread elevation using impersonation. Here the thread description is given. Web server may able to impersonate the context of the key clock server in order to gain additional privilege. Right, so this is the threat description. We identified the threats and security controls also we need to identify separately. Whenever we have the threats or vulnerabilities, we need to provide proper security controls or remediations to mitigate these issues, right? For that, you can create a general security controls to mitigate these issues. Example, here you can see I have created the security controls general security controls to address the threats. Basically, this is the OWASP practices, right? Secure authentication, secure authorization, session management, session timeout, input validation, secure error handling, secure logging, secure configuration, encryptions, asymmetric encryption, encryptions, symmetric encryption, secure channel, TCP port hardening, like that, I have created the security controls for the web application. First, we created the threat model report using Microsoft Threat Modeling tool and we identified the security controls which is applicable for the web application. Example, our case, we taken a sample web application to address the web application related threats. These are all the general security controls we need to consider, right? So that is why I created the security controls here. Okay, once again, now we can recall the risk assessment overview, which is discussed in our previous slides. Whenever we have the security risk that may be in the pre-sales stage or requirement stage or in the design architecture stage or in the coding or in the testing or in the production, post-production, we need to consider that as risk, right? Now we are discussing in this area, design architectural security activity. One of the major security activities, threat model, we already executed and created the report. Now we have the open threats list 
also the general security controls also we identified based on these two input we need to create the risk assessment so each threat we need to update in the risk assessment sheet and how we need to execute that angle we can discuss now okay this is the threat model report we created the threat model report using microsoft threat model tool and threat details are available here example the first threat elevation using impersonation the threat description is web server may able to impersonate the context of key clock server in order to gain additional privilege okay this is the the threat description and we can take the threat details and we can create the risk assessment i am opening the risk assessment sheet this is the sample risk assessment sheet we can use this type of similar risk assessment okay first the serial number or id you can create then the threat description the first threat we saw it here right this is the threat description just you can copy and paste it here the web server may able to impersonate the context of the key clock server in order to gain additional privilege so this is the first thread here we have two risk controls one is pre risk control post risk control two sections we have first we will see the pre risk control so we identified the threads and we updated in the thread description column we need to create the risk rating for the threat example we can use the cvss calculator and we can create the risk i already created and i have the cvss url also you can go and you can we can click this url okay currently i used the cvss v3.1 calculator now this is the thread right based on this thread description suppose if we want to execute that thread in the uh, real production what level of attack vector is required maybe the only network access or adjacent or local access or physical access do we need so here this is server side back end services so and uh, this is mission trusted boundary i consider we need local access is required local access is required that is why i selected here then the attack complexity this is the back end services and servers are placed in a secured place so attack complexity is high i selected then privileges is required we don't want privileges very minimal privileges required only the local access that is why i given low user interaction user interaction is required to execute the attack user interaction is not required generally if we have local access we can sniff the traffic then the scope unchanged changed here i selected unchanged suppose if it is executed what level of confidentiality loss it will give whether this is none low high integrity none low high availability none low high suppose if it is executed here have the uh, high confidentiality issue so i selected high integrity also impact at high that is why i selected high availability may also occur high okay this is the base score i given it here once i enter these details automatically i can get the risk 7 out of 10 and this is a high high severity issue we have the temporal score and environment related score also time being i will use only the base score based on that i will create the risk assessment now we have created the risk assessment this is high that is why i put the cvss severity is high then likelihood of the occurrence also high then the risk level whether it is acceptable or unacceptable that details also we can update in the pre risk control okay then we have the security current security controls 
what are all the security controls we considered example 11 1 2 it's nothing but we already identified here this is the one authentication we have authorization we have and secure channel this is the relevant security controls we need to consider right that is why i mentioned here again you can see this is the threat details we done the pre-risk control based on the currently available security controls and we calculated the cvs severity likelihood and risk level also we done it okay so to mitigate this issue we recommended new security controls to implement the tls certificate after implementing the new recommended security controls we done the post security controls so there we reduced the risk high to none right suppose if we have any open threats sometimes maybe it may implement partially or sometimes due to some external component limitation we can't fix this issue so that time if we have any open issues we can update in the residual risk category then the impact analysis so we introduced the new security controls example the tls certificate based secure channel is here recommended so if we have any impact based on this new security recommended controls we can analyze the impact assessment so here we don't have any impact that is why i given no impact now we introduced the tls based secure channel suppose if you want to convert into your requirements you can convert and you can update in your security requirements sheet so this is the flow we need to follow whenever we do the risk assessment okay again at a high level you we saw the pre-risk control and the currently available security controls recommendation to mitigate the issues then we done the post security risk control residual risk control impact analysis requirements reference or updates all this aspect we saw here right okay at least whenever you create the security risk analysis or security risk assessment at least these details should be placed in your report suppose if you need more inputs you can create multiple columns and you can include your inputs based on your requirement this is the minimal input we need to consider whenever we create the security risk assessment or security risk analysis report okay next you can see the pre-risk control i given the cvss urls here and post risk controls also i given uh, the cvss reference cvss calculator so whenever we create the pre-risk and post risk post risk both the reference urls of the cvss you can update in the sheet so that it will be useful in future so okay summary of this session we saw how to create the threat model using microsoft threat model tool and we identified the threats and each threat we need to execute the risk assessment the sample risk assessment also we saw then where can we use the risk assessment when we want to create the risk assessment for the below mentioned scenario suppose assume that we are developing the web-based application including rest apis mobile application cloud iot embedded devices whenever we want to create the risk assessment at least these approaches we can follow and we can create the risk assessment okay next session plan the previous session and today's session we saw how to execute the threat model in the automated way using microsoft threat model tool so next session the threat model execution with manual approach that angle we can discuss and sample risk assessment for the threat model Th these two aspect we can discuss in the next session okay friends i done the session for the day suppose if you have any clarifications or doubts you can post in the comment box i will reply you Okay friends, thank you for watching this video. Bye.